Okay, welcome to uh, some Hawaii geology. Uh, I'll probably use this for more than just my current class. I'll probably use it in the future. But uh, I want to give just a real quick little regional uh, lesson on Hawaiian geology since I'm here. On what's going on. And then uh, we'll look a little bit closer at what's happening here on the island that I'm at. And uh, what's even close up here next to me. Because these rocks are a little bit interesting in that even the people that live here don't know what they are. Uh, they think they're lava rock. And the truth is, they're not. They're something else. Uh, but first, let's uh, let's do a quick overview of what's going on uh, with the Hawaiian Islands. So, the the fun the little fun bit about Hawaii and the Hawaiian Islands is that's a great little example of plate tectonics and uh, shield volcanoes and hot spot volcanism. So, what's all that mean? Well, when we look at Hawaii, we've got these islands all strung out in a chain, and uh, what's going on is you've got the newest islands over here. And they also happen to be the largest. And the active volcanoes are about here. Uh, Kilauea is about right here on this island. There's Mauna Loa and Mauna Kea. And there's a couple more on the other side I forget the name of. Uh, and then there's Maui with Haleakala. Every now and then Haleakala will go off. It's been maybe 50 years since it went off. Uh, and even now, uh, if you go down into the ocean, there's a new little volcano that is erupting. Uh, but it's not over, it's not above sea level yet called uh, Loihi. So, over time, these volcanoes pop up and they get carried away by plate tectonics. And as you go along, if you had to actually radiometrically date these rocks, it would go from about 1 million years old to about 2 million years old to about 3 to 5 to 6 million years old. And eventually, if you look at the bathymetry, which is the underwater uh, topography, uh, of these uh, of this area you'd actually see more islands along this way and there's even some small atolls out this way in the northwestern Hawaiian Islands and so there's been some sort of Hawaiian Islands out here for hundreds of millions of years uh, you know when I used to live out here and work in a museum I talked to kids about dinosaurs whenever there'd be a dinosaur exhibit in and I'd say did dinosaurs ever live on Hawaii and a lot of them would be like no Hawaii's not old enough but some of the older islands that used to be here that are now long gone and pushed off due to plate tectonics, those things that are down deep under the ocean and completely just eroded away, uh, you may have had some dinosaurs living on those things, or maybe some some birds, or at least pterodactyls, right? So, uh, you have fresh, new volcanic islands. If you go to the big island, it's hard to find beaches like this, like what I'm standing on, uh, because there just hasn't been that much erosion yet. There's still been a lot of eruptions in the last couple hundred years. But as you go to these islands, you go to Maui, you go over here to Oahu, which is where I'm at, there's much better beaches because these things have eroded, they've been here, they've stopped erupting, and the reason they've got beaches is around them, coral reefs have been able to form. And when the coral reefs get busted up by the wave action, you get beaches just like what I'm standing here uh, on. And so this is calcium carbonate sand, or AKA calcite. If I take acid and put it on this, uh, it will fizz just like the calcite crystals we've got in class, or the limestone that we've got in class. Um, so, I'm over here on this island. It's about three to four million years old. It was formed by a couple of big shield volcanoes that aren't really there anymore. Uh, it, if, if you're aware of this, if you ever come to Hawaii on vacation, a lot of folks come down here to Waikiki, and next to it you'll see um, Diamond Head. And Diamond Head, yes, is a volcano, but it's a much smaller one. It's a cinder cone. It's something that erupted kind of after the fact. Uh, it has to do with these islands basically kind of settling uh, and sort of being a little bit uh, awkward as you do as you do all of this. Er I'll go through it. As you do all of this erosion, uh, it's like taking stuff off of a boat. You know, take off a bunch of the stuff on the top, and these things will kind of raise up a little bit. It'll cause melting underneath there from that decompression, and so you'll get these other little smaller volcanoes popping up after the fact. And that's what Diamond Head is, but I can't see that right now from where I'm at. Uh, but if any of you ever vacation here, that's what that is. So I am here. This has been here for three to four million years. It's hard to find large volcanoes here. You don't even realize they're there. Uh, but there's a big one there, a big one there. And I'm kind of out here uh, on the edge. 
And so there has been a lot of erosion since then. Oahu used to be a lot bigger. It used to be like as big as Hawaii. The mountains used to be taller. Volcanoes were bigger. But now, erosion has taken over. If we look at this, we've got this huge block out here. And if I were to go up to that, it'd be all basalt. And all those kind of layers you see there are from eruptions that have gone off to the side and settled. However, I'm basically standing inside of an ancient shield volcano. This stuff used to go way out there into the ocean a few miles out. But these waves, over time, and the rain that's hitting the island, uh, is bringing the whole island down from all of this erosion. And you can see these waves as they do their job. If I go out here into the surf, I can find piece, big pieces of basalt, just like I just showed you from those little rocks. Uh, and they're tumbling and rolling around, and they'll run into other basalt, and they'll get smaller and smaller. I'll go ahead and hand you off to my assistant. Uh, so, another kind of fun fact, uh, if we've gone over the mass wasting uh, uh, chapter thus far, uh, is there's been massive, massive landslides that have come off of Hawaii. You don't really see the features on this uh, now, but if I were to kind of show you up over into that valley, uh, in five years I'll do this with a drone. Uh, but you can see these erosional features where you had uh, huge chunks of these islands breaking off and sliding off into the ocean. And if you look at a bath bathymetry map of Oahu, off the north side of Oahu, so that way, uh, you see these huge chunks in the ocean that just broke off of the side of the island and sloughed off into the ocean. The tsunamis must have been insanely huge. Uh, and we've got evidence of deposition of chunks of reef 800 feet up in the air uh, on these islands, which must have been brought there uh, by tsunamis. Uh, now, these islands have been here for a few million years. In the last few million years, we've had ice ages, right? In fact, the, the top of the big island, which is 14,000 feet up, uh, they've had ice caps up there. There's been some glaciers that are not there anymore. Uh, although, every now and then, if you watch the news, uh, it will snow up there and people will go up there and ski on the top of the big island, which is just mind-blowing to a lot of folks, because when you think about Hawaii, what do you think about? You think, you think about this, right? Uh, but that sea level, due to the ice ages, has changed over time. And in general, sea level kind of it changes pretty quickly. I think a good analogy for it is something like the stock market, right? If you ever go follow a stock like Tesla or something, uh, you'll see it kind of, uh, you know, it'll zigzag up and it'll zigzag back down, it'll zigzag back up. And it's hard to find these patterns, but maybe patterns exist about how that kind of goes up and down. Well, sea level is a lot like that. There's reasons why it goes up over slow periods of time and back down over long periods of time. But in between those two time periods, it's kind of doing this, you're doing that, and sometimes it has to do with the ice ages. Uh, and I mentioned Milankovitch cycles uh, previously in this class, and that's, I don't go too much into that, but that's, that's kind of why. But because of that sea level change, I do want to show you uh, this stuff. And just glancing at this stuff, uh, especially over here, when you just briefly look at it, and even when I come up here to look at this, I go, oh, that's probably basalt, right? That's got to be lava rock. Uh, but I've been in other places before. I've been to the Bahamas, and I see a limestone that looks just like this. And it's called phytokarst, which means something like, you know, karst you've learned is basically like a cave, sort of topography where you have limestone and caves and such. Uh, and a phyto, I think, means, it's not fire, it's something else. But anyway, uh, it erodes and it's super duper sharp. You don't want to walk on this stuff, it'll absolutely eat your feet. Uh, but if we look closely at it, come in close, come in close, uh, you can actually see, a little closer, you can see, so I'm, asking, I'm asking Daniel to walk on the final cars. <laughs> you can, uh, you can see the little structures uh, from the reef. Like these are tabulate corals. And so those are little, um, you'd have little polyps living in these things and it'd come out. Now this is very eroded, right? Like, so you've eroded, this was reef, this is coral reef, and it's been eroded down and you've gotten all this little sharp stuff here. So this used to be a lot larger, a lot bigger. 
Uh, and right now, this kind of stuff is being deposited a few hundred feet uh, off the coastline here. But I asked my friend that lives here, because I was kind of curious. I was like, okay, I see this weathering stuff, right? I see this chemical weathering that I'm looking at. And I go, hmm, it's not very rounded. You think on the beach, with all this sand hitting it, uh, it'd get a, r a little bit rounded. But the sand isn't very hard. I'm not in Texas. I'm not on a beach where it's full of silica, where it's full of quartz sand. This is calcium carbonate. It's soft. So instead of getting rounded rock here, I've got very jagged rock that's being chemically weathered. And I asked my friend that, who grew up in this house just 10 feet away, I said, hey, do you recognize this? Like, has it always looked like this? Or is this changing a lot over time? And I'm kind of wondering, like, you know, is the ocean doing some of the chemical weathering here? Or is it what I think it might be, which is just rainfall? And he said, it hasn't changed. Like, I recognize all this. It's like this when I was a kid. And he's, I think, 36 years old, so we're talking 30 years of time here. And um, so that's kind of what I figured, is rainwater is just a little bit acidic from going through the atmosphere. There's a little bit of CO2 in the atmosphere. It mixes with that. I think it's just ever so slightly acidic. And so it can do some chemical weathering uh, on this uh, calcite or on this limestone. So a lot of people don't realize this is limestone here, and it was from when the sea level was a little bit higher. So water level would have been up here more, beach would have been farther inland, and out here you've got coral reef that's forming, and it's getting banged up by storm events and then getting deposited and stuff on top of it and compacting it until you're basically getting some limestone. Um, Oh, 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 oh. Let's look at something else a little bit interesting. So if you've ever been in a cave, you've seen cave formations. You've seen stag stalactites and stalagmites, uh, and that's from the limestone being dissolved and then re-precipitating somewhere else. So in the instance of a cave, you've got rainwater and groundwater coming down into the cave. It's dissolving some of the limestone up above you, and you get these big uh, stalactites that are forming from it, and those things will drip off, and then you'll have the little stalagmites on, underneath those. Uh, and that's where that calcite is re-precipitating. It's happening here, too. We're just not in a cave. If you look closely at some of this, it's very, very smooth. So here it's a little bit rough, but that's where you've got that, the reef material, the calcite, and it's eroding, and then it's just sitting here on top of this and re-precipitating. If you look down here, it's extremely smooth. So up here, you know, I'm trying to figure out why this is here and why it's not uh, you know, further down where we just walked up from, and the best guess I've got uh, is we're just high enough up here that you're not getting a whole lot of interaction from the ocean. The ocean spray, uh, and the waves will maybe wash away a lot of the excess calcite. So we get a lot of, you know, you're not, it's not allowing it to re-precipitate down there in the calcite. But up here, you got no ocean water getting to this. And so you just have rain hitting it, and so it just flows down a little bit, and then it'll stop and, and recalcify a little bit. So kind of interesting. Uh, I don't know that I've seen this anywhere else on this whole island. I imagine it exists somewhere, but um, it's kind of neat. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I've got. So hopefully you learned a little bit more about weathering and erosion. Uh, if you ever come to Hawaii, maybe you can kind of understand some of what you're, what you're looking at, what you're seeing. Uh, and this isn't, you know, this isn't just Hawaii. This sort of thing exists elsewhere, but Hawaii is just this great example of the, the plate tectonics in action kind of thing and shield volcanoes and that kind of thing. Uh, but this weathering stuff is something you see elsewhere. You see this stuff in the Bahamas. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you could find it in Florida in a couple places, but I've never seen rocks like this in Florida, but it's not to say they're not there. But anyway, uh, yeah, have a good one.